It's a well-known fact in Quark is that you can use the native compilation to compile your applications to native executables that start up very, very quickly. But it also makes a lot of sense to run Quark as just in a normal JVM mode as Java process. And actually, I mostly run uh, Quark as, uh, as JVM mode because then I don't have to wait for these native um, build times. And um, also, I get the a benefit of the thin deployment artifacts of this layered approach, especially when using Docker images, that I get tiny diffs when doing a continuous, a continuous delivery approach. And also what you can do, you can use an alternative JVM. For example, I use OpenJ9 to get some better resource consumption. I have a project here to show you this, which is my coffee shop project which I run in Quarkus version 1.3 and with Java 14. And what I want to show you is how to run this with OpenJ9. There is an article by my colleague Niklas, um, which explains this very nicely and with some better data, how to run OpenJ9 uh, here in a more uh, sophisticated setup. And especially it compares the resource consumption that is somewhat uh, in between um, the native mode and the default, uh, that means OpenJDK, JVM mode. But it's quite remarkable um, what difference you get just by using a different runtime. I want to show you this here. And what I have is I have a Docker file, which is uh, quite typical, I would say, for the JVM mode. So I use adopt OpenJDK with the OpenJDK um, mode here in Java 14. With this flavor, I build my application, I add this. So you already see the, uh, the difference here that I have my library um, uh, directory for the Java files and then I run my application. And the OpenJ9 version looks very similar. I only have to swap the base image and then I get the different flavor of OpenJ9. And already by doing that, I get a huge improvement in my resource consumption. Let me show you this. I um, can build and run this application as Docker container. So I run the Docker container with OpenJDK flavor, and then I do the same thing for OpenJ9. And when I do this, then I have two applications uh, running. So my coffee shop twice here in OpenJDK and OpenJ9 mode, and I have a database um, that will be accessed. So my applications already do some stuff um, to be a little bit closer to a real world. And then I can just access my applications curl localhost 8001 to access my coffee orders. And of course, also the same works in the other flavor. So both applications do the same thing. But then it's quite a difference. If I look into the stats of the containers that run locally, that I get, well, less than um, half of the resource consumption, if I just use openj9. So I did nothing else. I only swapped the, uh, the JVM that I use and I already have a huge improvement here on, uh, on this machine. And then if you have a closer look um, at the article uh, from Nicholas here, you see that there is also, well, some more sophisticated options that you can use, for example, um, class sharing, which is a very interesting approach that OpenJ9 includes to further optimize that. And you can have a look uh, into this. But I actually think it's very remarkable that if you do nothing else than just swapping the base image by just swapping the JVM, that you already get a huge improvement. So this is actually the reason why, honestly, I use um, OpenJ9 as my default uh, Java now that I always have now, uh, typically in, in version 14. And I got this by adopt OpenJDK. And this is now my default uh, Java because of these benefits. Um, of the resource uh, consumption improvement. And I don't have to do anything else, which is quite nice as a developer by just swapping the uh, the JVM that I use. But don't trust me and my numbers. Uh, try it out yourself. Um, you can have a look at the source code. And thanks a lot for watching.